Hello and welcome to another CAD Dimensions Tech Tip. My name is Derek Welker and today we'll be diving into SOLIDWORKS CAM by starting with the things you need to know in order to hit the ground running. SOLIDWORKS CAM is now included with every seat of SOLIDWORKS so everyone has access to it. To enable SOLIDWORKS CAM, you must enable the add-in found within the Tools Add-ins dialog. Once the add-in is enabled, you will notice the additional tabs within the Feature Tree and the Command Manager. SOLIDWORKS CAM is a feature-based CAM package, so we have a CAM feature tree which contains all of our features like holes, pockets, and perimeter features, for example. The operation tree contains all of the toolpaths like rough, finish, and drill, for example. The tool tree is your tool crib and gives you some special functionality for working between your tools on the machine and SOLIDWORKS CAM. One example is if a tool breaks, you can replace it with another size in the tool tree and it will update all toolpaths utilizing this tool. Starting in the Feature tab, we must set up our properties before we begin any programming. This begins by selecting the machine we want to work on. Double-clicking will open the menu to select the specific milling machine we are looking for. This is beneficial because it stores a lot of machine-specific parameters that help us post and determine cycle time. We can also specify which tool crib we will be using on this machine if it does not have one by default. Specifying the appropriate stock is important in order to simulate the toolpaths. This verifies that you will receive the desired end result as well as making sure you do not break any tools during manufacturing. Another important step is to specify the material because it adjusts the feeds and speeds for you. Setting up your coordinate system is extremely easy to do. I like to set it to a stock vertex and just select the bubble from the graphics area. Now that everything is set up and ready to begin programming, we can add some features. Adding features manually is a fairly simple process, but SOLIDWORKS CAM can automate most of this for you. By running Extract Machinable Features, SOLIDWORKS CAM analyzes the geometry and applies features based on what it sees. It does not look at the SOLIDWORKS features. From there, we can generate operations for all of our features. This kicks us over into the SOLIDWORKS CAM operation tree. These are just operation strategies though. To determine the exact toolpaths, we must generate toolpaths. Once the toolpaths are generated, we can simulate to see what the toolpaths will look like. Adjusting the simulation speed on the fly is pretty easy, and once the toolpath is finished or paused, you can compare the machine part back to the SOLIDWORKS geometry. This helps you determine if you have any undercuts or are leaving material. Adjusting the parameters of each toolpath is as easy as double-clicking on the toolpath. You can adjust tool size, feeds and speeds, step over, lead in, lead out, and much more within this menu. Back in the operation tree, we can combine and sort operations. Sorting the operations allow us to put all of the roughing operations before the finishing operations. This can help with eliminating so many tool changes. Combining operations puts any toolpath using the same tool together. This can certainly help your cycle time. If we want to manually create a feature, we will go back to the feature tree in order to do this. If you already have a setup, then you can just right click on that setup and create a new 2.5 axis feature. If not, you must create a mill part setup. To do so, you can right click on the coordinate system and select to create a new mill part setup. You must select a face or plane normal to the machining direction in order to generate a setup. The arrow you will see will tell you the correct machining direction because every face has two normals. You can reverse the direction using this option. Within the 2.5 axis feature dialog, the first thing you must do is specify the type of feature you want to create. Each feature allows different things to occur. An open pocket, for example, allows you to start from outside of the area, whereas a traditional pocket will not. You can select a sketch, edges, or faces to generate the area. In this example, I will pick the bottom face of a pocket. Moving on to the end condition tab, we can select on the top face in order to specify the pocket. This works exactly like an extrude in SOLIDWORKS. If we have any islands within this pocket, we would select on the Island tab, but in this case we do not, so we will just accept the feature. Once a feature has been created, we generate the operation plan and toolpaths like, if we, are, like we have already done. Hopefully with this quick getting started tech tip, you can hit the ground running with SOLIDWORKS CAM once you upgrade or install SOLIDWORKS 2018. Thank you for watching another CAD Dimensions Tech Tip. See you next week. Don't forget to check us out on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and our blog for more great content by clicking on the links in the description below.